Well, hi, good morning. Thank you so much for joining me in my shop here on October, what is it? October 5th. <laughs> okay, uh, so another day doing some more wires on this radio. Uh, things are actually going a little better than I had uh, anticipated, but then again, I've been concentrating on the easy stuff. So let's See what's next here. Okay. So if I look up in this part of the radio, oh boy, look at this. So so th this wire right here and the bundle coming out of this hole and actually coming out of the big transformer down below there's some coming out here there's another hole over here so it's probably a primary side and a secondary side one of these wires is cracking right in here so this is a danger area if you crack these wires right up tight in this hole which is possible from you know being lackadaisical doing doing bad stuff you can cause a short up here and uh, good luck trying to sort that out. So we don't want that to happen, that's for sure. Um, looks like there's no remaining cracked wires. Oh, there's a bunch of yellow ones right in here. And you have some longer yellow wires up in here. And I'm purposefully ignoring this area. Um, well, let's look at them one at a time here. So this yellow wire which is soldered down to the chassis here comes along funny it's so long eh? why, why didn't they make it much shorter why, why did they make such a long wire going all the way up there and back and here it connects to something I, I can't even see in there So it connects to a terminal. So uh, out here is a uh, one of the uh, alignment adjustments, and that's what this piece is here. This is a capacitor installed across the trimmer, or near the trimmer. Anyway, yeah, looks like it's right across the trimmer. We have a yellow wire coming to one side. We have another yellow wire coming to the other side. Hey, that's not so hard. Those two can be changed pretty easily. We come back here a little further. There's a yellow, cracked yellow wire down here. It's also got more wire than necessary. more a lot more wire than necessary coming up to this terminal that's another one that's not hard to replace and we have another yellow one coming from here and it's traveling to a terminal back over here we have one going from here heading up this way. It looks like it's probably this really long one that comes up into the bundle. So we want to leave that one alone for now. Okay, uh, there's a bunch there I can work on. Uh, I think maybe I'll start with a more difficult spot. Let me spin this way around here. I think I can get a better look at it this way. That's a lot better. So maybe for number one. Wow, these are looping around and bending in funny, unexpected ways. I should, I should, uh, should clip this one, pull it out, leave it connected to the other, the other end. Put a clip lead on here to remember this. Then go after the wire below it, which is this yellow one here. Yeah, 
it's not, it's not very specific, is it? It's the yellow one that goes over to here. Then there's another yellow one that's coming from here down past it. That's the long one. That's This is the one we want to stay away from for now. So, so I would cut this guy, this guy, just to get him out of the way for now. Like I said, pull it back. And then replace the one over to here then replace this one okay that's the plan that's the exciting plan now these aren't the most exciting videos are they probably the most exciting part of this is cutting them out so <laughs> I've turned the video on catch the excitement here okay, and that should be the one that's coming from the loose bundle here which because I never know when I'm going to be distracted from my shop for an hour or two. I come back and I cannot remember at all what I was doing, so I don't want that to happen. So we're going to put the clip lead there. Just as a uh, mnemonic, I think is what they call that. And then knock that out of there. those two wires done my coffee break alarm is going it's good let's just check these out here make sure I... yeah I wish I had a coffee break alarm where I, where I used to work although you know people were pretty good at watching the clock I have to admit Floppy, but I think it'll be okay. Good. Okay, that's two more wires done. What are we down to now? Now we're, you know, to some degree, the mass of yellow wires because there's excess yellow wire in here. So when I look in, I see all this cracked wire. It's the same wire looping around a little bit. So we got this guy and this guy next. They're going to either side of the uh, capacitor here. I can't imagine the length of the wire is in any way a planned thing. I think it'd be more like maybe the guy who, particular builder of this radio, uh, was a little lackadaisical with the uh, wiring. Maybe the new guy was doing it. Okay, so one end of the wire do them one at a time so I don't get them mixed up. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Get my clip lead handy here. Cut this one right off the terminal. Or maybe you know what? I might, might try desoldering this one. So often these wires are wrapped very thoroughly around the terminals by the people in the factory, and it's really kind of tough to get them off. They just cut them, and that's good enough. But this looks like they just put through and soldered. Yeah, it just shoved it in the hole and soldered it. Just make sure the hole is open here. Well, I'll we'll have to do it with a new wire. Whoop, I soldered it back. That's just a little surprising. Um, often I see these radios, they're very, very well built. Uh, you know, I think sometimes they're even have specified the number of wraps around the terminal for the wires and stuff so the factory builders do a good job because the last thing you want is uh, like every tenth radio to come off the line not working well uh, that would be a disaster it's an interesting question how, how many of these in modern technology too 
how much of that stuff they build works when it comes off the end of the line. Frankly, I'm totally blown away by the fact that my cell phone works every time I go to use it. I think to myself, oh my god, you know, there's a number of transistors inside that cell phone that's comparable to the number of stars in our galaxy. And maybe it's even much, much more. Okay, what did I do with the clip leaf? I don't really need it here, but I'm going to put it on anyway, because you never know when a cat might come and demand attention. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'll install the wire there. Okay, let's see what we've got left here. Uh, so we have the, we have the cable with the three wires in it. A red, a black, and a yellow. And then we have a number of red wires Here, kind of sneaks around, goes over to here. It's laid pretty low. You can kind of get an idea of the order in which these things were wired, because the lowest wires are going to be first wires in are going to be the lowest normally. We have a red one coming along here. Comes up to this terminal. So that would be an easy one to change from here to here. And the other red one that's in there is coming out of the bundle. I really think the next thing to do is get rid of these red ones here. And I think, really, let me just put this light over here. I think that might be the end of the hole. Well, I don't know. There's another, there's another yellow one over here, which runs quite a distance. Yikes. Where does it go? Appears. You can see it way down in the corner there. Comes along. And this black one gets to, gets involved. Oh my gosh. Okay, we'll stay away from that one for now. That one. Stay away from that one. Okay, so we'll do, do these a uh, uh, couple of free red ones here, I think. Now, I did this one, fish the wire around. Wow, what's going on here? I think these wires are just, they just have stuck themselves together just because they're sticky. Got one of those fake shocks. Do you get those? Sometimes you know, like a nerve or something, something like a tendon pops in your hand a little bit, and you get this. And, and if you're doing this work, you think you're being electrocuted immediately. <laughs> yeah, these are just stuck together here. I just pull them apart. There. Now you can see what that really is. Just a wire. Oh, it goes way down there. What's going on way down there? That all these wires have to go down there. So the yellow one rises up and connects right, right here. Oh goody. Okay, that's good. That's the end of the yellow one. Uh, this this one. Oh my gosh! I can't really see it. And this is going right to the antenna terminal. This is the incoming, this is the antenna signal coming in. I'm trying to get into the radio. I think it's related to that capacitor that's still down there. You can see that uh, right down in there. Yeah, that looks like a combo problem there. Capacitor and wire. But the yellow one has become easy because it comes way up here. And that yellow one went all the way to here. So that's a doable one too, without too much trouble. Now what I'm doing is I'm leaving these three cabled up ones uh, for the end. Okay. Uh, okay, I think I'm just gonna take a short
short break here. Okay, got the uh, got those two red ones done. Discovered a green wire here that's also shot. Uh, green wires are often carrying the uh, signal. Often they're grid wires, but not necessarily. Uh, so I'm going to go after this long yellow one that comes up here. Comes along, just making doubly sure now. It's not actually terminating somewhere in between. Where'd my flashlight go? Hello, flashlight, where are you? It's taking a walk. There it is. Just don't want to be fooled here. Nope, I can see it running continuously. Way down there. And rising up to this terminal here. Perfect. Let's see if I can get it out of there. not get it out. <laughs> just, just cut it and leave it in there. See, a bunch of stuff is jammed together down here. But I am trying to sort this all out. Like they might have put some extra tape on the uh, one of these wires just where it passes under this metal panel and the tape is uh, kind of clogging everything up here so this is where accidents happen right in here I think I got to leave that that piece in there because uh, I can't tug it out. Much as I'd like to get it out and see what's going on with this black wire. So it's a black one with the uh, what looks like tape on it. Take together. Maybe that's what's happened. Okay, I can't get it out without. And I don't know what I'm going to do about this black wire, which I can't even see where it's going. Oh, maybe I can. No, that's the yellow one I was trying to cut. I've got this yellow wire hanging down here. That chance I'm getting cutters down there. I'm going to just push it down. Get it out of the way. I can nip it here, though rid of it from here on. Actually I can nip it quite a ways back. Just leave a little piece. Now what's the difficulty in getting wires through there? There's a great big open gap. There's, there's no need to tape stuff. Hey let's go with the close-up camera and take a good look at that and see what's going on. What's going on? Let's see if I can see in there. Doubt the focus is correct here. It's close enough. So there's the yellow wire with the insulation missing and in the end of it I just shoved down there. The yellow wire just behind the resistor is it can't be tugged out of there. Exactly, it's restricting it from coming out. If I look down here, now it's out of focus here, but if you look, see, I'm worried that there's a splice in there or something crazy like that. It looks like the yellow and black wire are taped together, is what it looks like. If I tug on the black wire instead of the yellow one, you get the same movement. So there's 
the yellow wire there. But from this angle, you can't really. Maybe in through here. Oh, there we are. Now we can see it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus the camera properly. Once I get it to sit here. To sit here. There we are. Okay, now just bear with me for a moment while I uh, call up the focus uh, dialog box for that camera. The software I used can't focus the uh, cameras. I have to call up the actual control box here. Okay, so we see down there a black wire with some whitish tape or yellowish tape on it. Beside it is a cloth covered wire. What happened to the yellow one? Where'd the yellow one go? The yellow one is underneath all that, I think. Okay, so if I pull on this black one. So why, why can't I just pull the yellow one out? What is holding it? Is it really? That's the yellow one. And it's just moving that black one. I think that tape has got to be on both of them. Another angle. Because you can't see the yellow wire right where the tape is. So I think it's under the tape. And you can almost see it coming out of that tape. So how am I going to do this? So I need to pull both wires out at the same time. And they're going in two different directions. They're kind of wying around parts, so it's not easy to pull on both of them at the same time. originally bare or has that become bare? That's that the black wire? No. What what is that wire? So I'm having trouble controlling the camera because of the angle here. Let me just change it there. Uh, you can see the black wire coming up. That's the basically the antenna lead. And the yellow wire down there. See the yellow wire coming out? It looks like it's coming right out of that tape spot. And then above it is this bare wire. Ooh. I don't understand the bare wire. Is it really bare? to stop being bare when you look at it here. Maybe a little more light on it that might help the situation. You know, that could be coming out of that wire. This this wire here could be a shielded wire, he says. I don't think so. feeling for uh, any kind of wire that might be in there. I think that's just cloth, but you know, it's very it's too stiff for just being cloth. I think there's wire inside that. So we would guess that's a shield, a shielded wire, and I'm seeing the ground wire poking out of the shield there, coming over and going conceivably soldered to the chassis or something like that down there. I'll never see it. Never. Well, there it is. 
Um, I'm sorry, I'm saying there it is, and you're like, well, what are you talking about? What exactly are you looking at? Right down through the little corner of the square mouse hole there, you can see a piece of wire where it's going exactly. It looks like it's going down through a hole. Or it'll actually be up through a hole to the top. That's not very good. There's no insulation on it. So what I'm concerned about is I'm the one who knocked the insulation off this wire, making it bare, and now it's going to short. There's no hint that there was ever insulation on it. There's no hint of any insulation. Okay, we can go back to tugging on the... Uh... Let's try to find the end of that black wire. So, again, okay, I'm holding this the wrong way. There. If you hold the camera the wrong way, it's... It, the image on the screen doesn't move the way you expect it to and it's very very confusing so that's why I'm holding it the way I'm holding it where am I looking now so we're looking for the black wire what's going on there it looks like it's so something funny going on there what is going on there I need a poker poker down there. So th this piece of solder on the end of the capacitor is very odd. strange uh, that they would solder something so close to the body of the capacitor and then is that the black wire the black yeah, it sure looks like it looks like it's disappearing into the bundle or the tape and then this is it coming out so what exactly is it attaching to another capacitor so you're saying the wire the wire comes in from here antenna terminal goes through a capacitor made in Canada, okay. <laughs> I thought it said Granada. <laughs> Comes around, all cracked up, goes down into the tape. And I think then it comes out of the tape, where where we go here? Out of the tape, there's the, and it is a. Oh, what what is going on right there? Now I got a view of something. It's a yellow wire. Tell me that's a terminal, that they're soldered to. Don't don't tell me that's a terminal. This would be why I can't pull the wire out. It's it's actually, not a single wire. So you can look at the yellow insulation and see it, it's kind of uh, splayed out there, right where it... Oh my gosh, really? This is the kind of jackpot I was worried about. This is just so inaccessible. Unbelievably inaccessible. So we got a capacitor down there. We got wires down there. We got something going on. I don't know what it is. I'm about to make a mistake replacing a wire. Well, uh, I think I'm going to stop right here for today. Uh, I've got lots of other things to do today. And then, of course, it's a long weekend coming. We've got company coming, so I won't be, uh, I won't be in here. Um, just to give you a beginning so you appreciate where I am with this thing. It's right down under all this stuff. Here, you can see the capacitor popping out down there. It's almost as if I have to take this out this out in order to get access to see clearly what's going on and to make the uh, repairs that are needed uh, I don't think there's any possibility of access down this way you know there's no clear access and it's kind of on the wrong side of this panel oh my gosh 
You see, you'd have to, we have to release, you know, this screw. Whoops, wait a sec, let me put this down. Looks like I'd have to release this screw. There's another screw up here. Oh, you can't see my finger when I'm pointing at it. I'm pointing at that screw right there. And then there's got to be a rudder down under. And then, then this is a switch mechanism here. So another way would be if if this is held by nothing more than oh look what they've done here. This is quite clever actually. So they have a switch here, a switch wafer, with terminal sticking out, sticking out. And then they have a, the uh, coil with its terminals sticking out. And typically you run wires between terminals. But in this case, they've actually married up the terminals and soldered them all together. And then there's wires coming, coming to them, including the yellow one, which was coming here. gonna happen. Well, yeah, now's a good time to stop. Uh, well, no, not, not quite. What is holding this in? So it's supported by this bracket up at this end here, this bracket. And the other end appears to be nothing more than these soldered connections. So to get, and this this wire isn't the kind of wire that's got cracking problems. This is a bare wire with a sleeve over top of it, and the sleeves are in good shape all through this radio. So what I would have to do is uh, disconnect these wires. Oh my gosh, there might be one down there that I can't get at. This is what a jackpot looks like. No, there is no. There's a terminal, but nothing hooked up to it. Remove these wires. Wouldn't even have to do that, you know. I just have to break the solder between the terminals that are are uh, lapped together here and then once it's just wires I can just and they take the screw I just pick this coil up and just lift it right out and then everything is there to be seen and dealt with the capacitor can be dealt with otherwise if I continue fiddling around some kind of mistakes going to occur including damaging this coil because it's not coming apart easily down there Okay, more ruminations, but, you know, uh, jackpots at every turn in this work. So I think the more you think about it ahead of time, the less chance you are to get yourself into a real fix where the 10-minute work becomes a 10-hour job or something like that. Okay, well, thanks for watching so far. Um, as I said, I won't be in the shop here for a few days coming, and... Uh, but I'm posting, I've slowed the posting of the videos down. And you might notice when I say what the date is, it's a couple days ago. Uh, so, so I keep some videos coming out for, for you to watch. Okay, that's enough for today. Thanks for watching.